state deficit, I want to touch upon that briefly because I know that your organization and you in particular have worked at examining the, the state fiscal mess that is currently uh, being looked at mm -hmm. and the solution, which I think is the wrong one personally, mm -hmm. to increase taxes from 3% state income tax from 3% to 4.5% is going to, again, reduce the level of, 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 of spending money that people can engage in in the, in the economy because they don't have much of it left anymore. It's going to reduce the number of businesses coming in with their capital and jobs because, again, uh, when you look at the collective tax pie, not state in isolation, city, county in isolation, but federal, state, county, city, local taxes together, uh, combined with the corruption tax, we're looking at a very unpalatable uh, fiscal and economic climate for those who are considering locating their businesses here. Is that not true? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, once again, our, our state and local, and I mean comprehensively state and local tax burden is low. Uh, and in fact, is lower than most of the Midwestern states. We're lower than every one of our neighbors except Missouri. We take 14.8% of income, they take 147 45th lowest in the nation. That said, our economy has lagged both the nation and the Midwest in growth for over 20 years. So we are doing something clearly very wrong. And, and during a recession, you're sort of, and we are in what's called the Great Recession now, right? It's not just a little thing. It's already lasted 15 months going into Let's month 16. Let's call it a depression. Because yeah, it's really, it's getting to that level. Uh, we have some difficult choices to make, and I think uh, the first and most difficult choice to make is what does state government do to balance its budget? What do you do to balance your budget? Is it the appropriate thing to raise taxes progressively, I emphasize that, and maintain spending or to cut spending? And uh, according to Nobel Prize winning economist Stiglitz, who won the 2001 Nobel Prize, the worst thing government could do is cut spending during a recession because it's a dollar for dollar contraction in your economy. Mm -hmm. And the best thing it could do, not raise taxes on low and middle income families, that does hurt your economy. You're exactly right on that, and I think you very much have focused on the middle class in your approach to public service. That's been one of the things you've argued for. We need to grow our middle class. We right. need to fight for our middle class. You don't want to tax them, but you do want to shift some tax burden up to more affluent people, and in particularly in Illinois, and particularly if, and I think you're one of these, you're a good capitalist. I happen to be a good capitalist, and I'll go back and I'll quote Adam Smith, the guy that invented capitalism, the wealth of nations in the 1750s. Mm -hmm. He said, you really need a progressive tax system, one that imposes a higher burden on wealthy folks than middle or low income folks when tax burdens measured as a percentage of income if you want to have a fair, responsive, workable tax well, system. The problem here, I, Ralph, that I think most people who are part of this, quote, middle class, end quote, in Cook County is that they are choosing to vote with their feet by leaving Cook County. Mm -hmm. uh, Cook County is, I believe, the only, uh, according to a recent report that I read, the only county with three million or more in population that has actually lost residents by about 30,000 people uh, less than were there when the 2000 census was taken in 2005 when the update was uh, conducted uh, we had 30,000 people less in Cook County so people are slowly leaving Cook County city of Chicago because either they cannot afford to live here the standard of living has become so expensive so high we're not akin to New York but we're getting there, we're getting there. and uh, you know the level of corruption is such that people are saying I've had enough with this nonsense so to go back to your point I think that it, it, people would pay for more uh, services, more government uh, services, if they were in fact getting them, but they're not getting them. And that's why they're voting with their dollars and their feet by going to other states, other regions, particularly south, right to work states, better climate, cheaper standard of living, uh, you know, more plentiful jobs. Actually, companies, auto companies who are making money are located, some four, 14 or 15 of them down there. So what I want to come back to is really, I think, three elements that drive government cost and I think you would agree salaries benefits and pensions mm -hmm. so if we can touch upon each of those three briefly I would really appreciate it uh, salaries if you look at and I was at a recent Federal Reserve seminar on salary structure in the public versus private sector uh, at the lower level public employees make a lot more than in the private sector mm -hmm. as you get up the scale going to the top level professionals make less in government than they would make in the private sector but at the entry level and the low end of the pay scale, uh, those employees typically make 30, 40, 50 percent more than in the private sector mm -hmm. because of collective bargaining and other yeah, issues, historical yeah. issues. So how can we lower the cost of government, hence lower taxation, cheaper standard of living, 
if we have these salary structures that are exploding out of control? Well, you need to make some judgments, and, and I would say while they're earning more than they are in the private sector at the entry levels in government, I, I, would, I would hardly argue that the salaries that they're earning are huge. And in fact, if you look across them, I mean, you're talking about salary levels that range from 25 to 35, depending but on well, the entry you, level. You and I know that at the, at the non- or Shackman exempt levels where people bring in their cousins, nephews, and well, nieces. Well, you're talking about something making, different now. Exactly, I, but I those are also part of service. the salary structure. Well, Patronage is different. As far as I'm concerned, we need to ferret it out. We need to cut it. We need, we need to get at the patronage stuff. It, it's not even slicing it in half will do. We probably need to cut two-thirds, three-quarters of those. How about jobs. all of it? Uh, th there might be some legitimate policy people that are patronage people that want to you want to have. If you're, let's say, you get elected as county board president, you'd probably want some policy people around you with your similar view of government. And, and yeah, they should be exempt from Shackman. And that, so there needs to be some, right? I mean, let's just be honest. You need some. We don't need anywhere near the level we have now. And it, you flip it. You talk about the public services that county provides while well, you're talking about health care services for for poor families right. you were talking about the criminal justice system you're talking about some major major public policy initiatives where you need a lot a large labor staff they are labor intensive services sure. and you need them to be competent and you need them to be relatively well compensated so at least they, they have a they earn a living wage because you don't want to be paying them a salary with one hand and then paying them benefits but, well, uh, for having a below living wage on the other no, that's no, sort I, of silly I policy. believe that everyone should get the salary that they are entitled to, that they deserve in light of their training, education, and experience. However, uh, when I came to the county government as a commissioner in 2002, we had almost 30,000 employees. Today, we're about 24,000. And I would argue that the county government runs better today than it did in 2002 with 6,000 less people. At the Forest Preserve District level, we had 1,200 employees in 2002. Today, six years later, we have 450 employees, and I would argue that the Forest Preserve District runs better with less people there. So we privatize certain things. We provide it for greater oversight and responsibility. We're by, no, by any means, we're not at the nirvana stage where everything is running perfectly. There's still a lot of work to be done. But if you consider that the salary benefits and pensions are 85% of, of every government spends, how do we bring that under control uh, while raising taxes and doing all these other things?